to say goodbye to 2023 and receive welcome 2024. Is that right? Yes? Can I hear big yes? Praise God. Okay. How are we going to say bye to 2023? Tomorrow, can we just put the date 12, 31, 23? Can we? No? We are here to say thank you to our Lord right now. And then we will enter 2024 with Thanksgiving. Facebook is full of lot of quotes about Thanksgiving. You open it from all believers, friends, Thanksgiving. Okay, what is Thanksgiving? Thank you, thank you, that's Thanksgiving. What is thankfulness? We all use this word very often, right? Thank you. Somebody opens the door, thank you. Even you go to India, we say thank you to Autumn and they are like, is she okay? Right? Because we practice that word here so much. So when we go back to India, we say thank you to many people without even realizing how because we are doing here. But when we think of that word for a second, sit back and think, what is thankfulness? And just think in your heart, what is thankfulness? Thankfulness is when we say thank you to somebody, our heart is overflowing with joy. Some kind of glowing in our hearts because Yavanji did something good to me. Thank you, Yavanji, I'm going to tell. Right? If somebody does bad thing, are we going to say thank you? No? Okay. Definitely, when somebody does good thing, we are telling thank you. We are thankfulness that time. And we, as Christians, as believers, we should thank God. We should thank God. Why? Why should we thank God? Okay, one of my friends said, um, I asked her on Thanksgiving Day as at work, uh, so what do you do? Church going person. So I asked, what do you do? Hmm. I go for a party. Okay, that's her job. But we are Christians. We are believers. What should we do? At least, do you accept with me that we have to thank God? Can you give a broad smile at me, please? I think everybody is sleepy. That's okay. One day in a year we can sit here, okay? Okay, I have my own thoughts. Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5.20, Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Lord Jesus Christ. Very simple. It's God's will. How many times we are trying to do God's will? This is one of the God's will. So many things are there in the Bible. This is one. Very simple. This is God's will. We have to thank God. Hello, church. Do you accept with me? Okay. Why, why, why? Because this thankfulness is a character. It's a, a habit. Um... It's a good attribute of a true Christian. We cannot just sit in the church or at home without thanking God. And also, this is a very good, wonderful discipline in our Christian life. We cannot pass by without thanking God. When you sing during worship, when they display the words, we realize, we understand and thank God. Bless the Lord, O my soul. We are telling our soul, bless the Lord. Without meaning, we cannot sing, right? If you are singing without meaning, you are a liar. You have to understand. So there are so many things 
when especially when you come to the church sitting in the sanctuary how many times from beginning to till now everybody mention thanking 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 god thanking god thanking god but today is a perfect day to celebrate all our accomplishments by the strength of jesus christ and thank god is very very perfect it's a very perfect time though we know every moment we have to thank god this is a very perfect time even though we just celebrated thanksgiving uh, day in november this is a very perfect day for a believers to sit in the sanctuary in the presence of god looking at him lord thank you you gave me a gift of life you gave me family we cannot keep quiet church we have to have thankful heart because this is god's will and we have to thank god for this bible word of god we see god's heart through this we see the salvation we see the miracles we see the promises it says when you are weak i will strengthen you if you are sad i will comfort you if you are depressed i will fill you with joy what else we want you name it you get it know where we get it hallelujah such a precious gift god gave at least for this we can thank god if somebody says i don't know how to thank god just thank god for this bible wonderful gift god gave us and just thank god for what he is yet to do in our lives i just want to go through few examples from the bible uh, by authors bible authors wrote many many things i just got very very few around 20 or 25 okay be, be alert the first thing i want to talk about david david thanked god for his kingdom there are many reasons he thanked god i just picked up this in second samuel chapter 22 verses 49 50 says god sets me free from my enemies you exalted me above my foes from a violent man you rescued me therefore i will praise you lord among the nations i will sing the praises of your name so king david was a shepherd boy god raised him to a higher level supernatural way as a king and he was a great king he was a famous king everybody respected him of course he had enemies there are lot of things to know about david but being a king he thanked god for his kingdom what is our kingdom church what is our kingdom i am talking about spiritual kingdom what are we aiming for what is our destination unless we form a very good spiritual ground we can't attain the spiritual kingdom so get ready church we don't know when jesus will come be ready you know about yourself what kingdom you are aiming for and what king for what kingdom you are getting ready and thank god for that kingdom what he has prepared for us and waiting for us and one more thing i want to say david thanked god for wealth first chronicle chapter 29 verse 12 to 13 says wealth and honor come from you you are the ruler of all things in your hands are strength and power to ex- exalt and give strength to all now our god we give you thanks and praise his glorious name wealth he had lot of wealth we all know about king david what all he had thousands of cattle camels all that uh, multiple palaces he had and you know he was a good fundraiser do you know king david was a good fundraiser he made a great plan to build a temple for god but god told him you are not the one going to build the temple 
your son Solomon will build the temple. He did not stop there. He did not stop. He continued. He made a big plan how the temple should be. And then he collected gold, silver, jewelries, logs, woods, lot of supplies, whatever needed to build that beautiful temple, he collected. That's why he became a fundraiser. And he thanked God for wealth. Any of us here can say, I am a poor person. I am talking worldly wealth. Can anyone say, I am very poor, Sushila? We are well blessed. Here and there, there will be ups and downs. But how we ever thought of thanking God for what wealth we have? We have to thank God. Small, small things. Small, small things. Small things and big things. We have to be thankful to God for that. The next example I have is Daniel. Daniel thanked God for his wisdom and power. Daniel chapter 2 verse 23 says, I thank and praise you God of my ancestors. You have given me wisdom and power and he goes on. Wisdom and power. I tell you, God has given all of us wisdom and power. Small to adult. Everyone excel in particular area maybe. Different degree. But we all have wisdom and power. Otherwise I don't think God would have brought us here. Otherwise I don't think we are sitting here today. There are many people in India, back in India, wanted to come here. I know my classmates. I know my friends. No way I am better than them. No way. But God has different purpose. God brought me. You all will accept with me. God has given wisdom. God has given wisdom, power to every one of you. God gave you family. You have the wisdom and power to run your family, manage the finance, take your children and you to a doctor's office, annual checkup, this and that, immunization, vaccinations, what not. Don't you think you have the power to run your own family? He has given us wisdom and power to spread the gospel in the world. Can you say amen for that? In one way or other, you are doing ministry. Unless you hold the uh, mic, that doesn't mean because you are not holding the mic, you are not preaching. You may talk to somebody some, something from the Bible, some nice words to somebody to comfort them. That's ministry. Being a nurse, I'm thankful to God. It's painful to see patients suffering, but in the midst of suffering, darkness, the difficult time, Many times, I'm telling in the sanctuary, I held my patience and prayed. That's a ministry. You come to the church, you clean, that is ministry. How? Because God gave you wisdom and power to do this without even thinking, why should I clean the toilet in the church? You are not thinking, but you are doing. It's a ministry. Why? God has given wisdom and power. But did we ever thank God for that? Did we ever thank God for that, that he has given us wisdom? Many of you are in IT field. Managers. Many of our church members are holding high position. I'm always proud about it. How? Why? How? In this country, no people, no better people than you and me to hold the position. What do you think? Who are we to serve in this country? What are we? Just imagine our Childhood. From where did we come? But still, God brought us and using us in this country. I never went to English medium school. But I'm a nurse. Because God gave wisdom. The power to stand and face the people. Thank God for that. I don't want anybody to say, Oh, I don't know what to thank for. I don't know how to thank for. 
here we are thank god for the wisdom and the power i'm going to the next uh, example about paul paul says we have to thank god for everything uh in the bible ephesians chapter 5 verse 20 says always giving thanks to god the father for everything in the name of our lord jesus christ it has i think everything is included in this everything but this particular thing he is writing to thessalonians paul admonished to thessalonians to thank god for everything in every circumstances you know when he said that when they were going through persecution in faith they were going through persecution because of their faith can you thank god when you undergo persecution it's not easy it's very hard but i can tell about my husband when he went through the persecution in the jail for 6 months 10 days at one point he was about to deny jesus so we ministered in palakkad on the border of tamil nadu and kerala so as soon as uh, he finished sharing the meeting was over we couldn't come down from the stage people ran the crowd ran to the stage and st- stood around my husband and i saw one old couple husband and wife holding their hands fell on prabhu's feet the reason is the w- old couple they said we had many testimonies they always say i was strengthened by jesus christ the holy spirit filled us and i never denied but this is the first time in my life i hear somebody openly accepting that uh, i was about to deny and then the holy spirit helped me to come back the, for that reason they fell but what i'm telling what trying to tell is the persecution the persecution what he went through was really hard sometime policemen slapped him spat on him kicked him they have a special uh, kind of thing a uh, very long uh, very strong and the, at the end i think there are balls if i'm not mistaken so with that they beat them he went through all that but even though he had he had to he was about to deny he had the dark time but still god enabled him church i tell you if you have to be uh, persecuted if you you are facing faith persecution i tell you the god who allows you to face the persecution will give you strength also many time people ask us how did you stand this how did you went through how did you tolerate i tell you it's not because of his strength or my strength this is because of my lord jesus christ strength so do not be afraid if at all it's coming it's coming the persecution will come be ready now itself tell to yourself one day we will face this what am i going to do will i stand for christ will i deny or i will stand here paul is thanking thessalonians for st- undergoing the persecution he was thanking god for the persecution i am just taking a chance to tell about persecution to you this time if you know anybody going through persecution you thank god for them thank god for israelites thank god for hamas people thank god for ukrainian people we don't know exactly what's going on just thank god it's god's will just thank god lord many things going around thank you lord help people to withstand if you do not have any points to pray i am telling you to pray for persecution people every day there are families still suffering we don't even know small small countries small small villages still persecution going on thank god for them if you can you help them stand with them when they suffer but thank god for them 
Okay. The next one is, I'm going to talk about leper thanking God. The le one leper thanked God for healing. Luke 17, 16 says, leper, the, the leper threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked Jesus. How did he thank? Jesus, thank you. Did he say that? He fell at his feet. I am not here to argue, but I'm telling you, church, some people are, oh, Bible doesn't say that we have to close our eyes when we pray. Bible doesn't say we have to kneel down and pray. Come on, go through the Bible. You will find everything in the Bible. This is just an example. He threw himself at his feet. I have seen in the churches, the previous church where we worship, that pastor used to come to the altar during worship, fell flat, face down during worship. Here, even if we say prayer, can we kneel down? Mm -mm. Our knees will not bend. If our knees will not bend, that is a disease. I am in neuro, I am telling you. Doctors will ask, can the patient bend his knees? You know why? By this they will diagnose. If you cannot bend knees for Christ, that means you have a problem. Go to Jesus to fix it. So, we have to thank God for healing. If, maybe it is just a small uh, um, chest infection, th cold, fever, something. That bothers when it comes, isn't it? Can anyone say it's just cold, it doesn't bother me? It bothers us. We cough in front of others. If you get urinary tract infection, you will be running to toilet every time. That bothers. Leg pain, skin, disease. You will be itching in front of everybody like Job. Church, let's thank God for healing. How many times in 2023 he healed every one of us? Can one person say that I never felt sick in 2023? One person. Can you raise your hand if you didn't fall sick? I'm glad if you don't fall, that's fine. But every time when we fall sick, let us thank God for healing. He is healing, that's why we are all here. We are all healed many, many times by Jesus Christ. Okay. Jesus thanked God for meals. Many, many examples about Jesus. I just picked because it looks a little different from others. Matthew chapter 15 th verse 36 says, Jesus took seven loaves and the fish thanked God. All the verses what I'm giving is self-explanatory. You don't need explanation. But still I just want to add a little bit because what God taught me in every verse is around two and a half years, many of you know what we went through, what we are going through. I was very mad at Jesus. We are doing ministry, we are giving this, 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 we were persecuted. Why now God bless us? Why God allow this sad thing in our lives? I was mad, but the Holy Spirit did not leave me, convicted me. You are complaining for one thing, but you received many things from God. How come you are not thankful to God? In a very hard way, I learned this les lesson. If we don't thank God for small, small things or worse things, the loss, the disease, hopefulness, darkness, if we don't thank God, he will teach you in the hard way. So don't go through the hard way. Just do what God wants us to Meals. How many of us are praying for meals? I have seen families sitting around the table, holding the hand and praying. That's a very good habit, even we don't do, but better to do. Not only at home, even if you go to the restaurant, do it. What's the problem? The restaurant man will beat you. The restaurant man will send you out. You pray. The Judah will pray even in the restaurant. Bless this restaurant and all the servers. That's a nice prayer. We have to pray for the restaurant where we are going and eating. They are all in good health. They are good people, kind enough. Whenever we ask, bring more uh, 
uh, spoons, something fell, you ask, they are bringing with smiling face. We have to thank them for that. Because Jesus thanked God for meals, we are also following Jesus to thank God. And we can't forget this. Job thanked God for his loss. Job 21 says, The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Maybe the name of the Lord be praised. It's very hard. If you don't cry, people will say, uh, she's not crying. I was told like this when Prabhu was in the jail, they have taken the husband. How dare she's sitting and laughing? Okay. And another person said, why she's crying? She's a believer. Why she's crying? That's what some people said. The world may say anything, church, but you and me should know we have to thank God during the loss. And Ezra 3.31 says that Israelites made a great big joy when they laid the foundation for the temple. How many of you are happy about the temples, the sanctuary, our church? We have to thank God for that. We have to thank God for our local church. We have to thank God for the pastor. We have to thank God for the people, other staff who are working with uh, pastor, the media people, worship team, children, teachers. How many are working along with the pastor to fuel the church with the word of God? Why not we thank them? Every time we are asking something for us. Give me health, give me food, give me increment, give me visa, green card, citizenship. All good. But along with that, let us thank God for all these local stuff also. And one more thing I'm finishing. Who is our destroyer? Who is our enemy? Because I acquainted to read an article uh, about a message it says that we have to pray for enemies. And it said something else. It touched me, so I'm going to share with you. Who is our enemy? Somebody's telling Satan. I know this answer. Anybody else? Huh? Our own self? Okay. Anybody? What do you think about God? You don't accept with me? Our Savior. Thank you, Basima. Look at the child. She is telling the correct answer. It's in Matthew uh, chapter 10, verse 28. Do not be afraid those who kill the body, but rather fear him who kills our body and soul. So now tell me who is our enemy? If we are sinner, if we are sinning, he is our enemy. He is not our friend. What a friend we have in Jesus, yes. But if you are sinning around, do you think he's going to be our friend? He is our enemy. He is a good king. He is full of love, kindness and compassion. But when the day of judgment, because the death is sure, wages of sin is death. When we die, you see, we are predestined to die. Bible says, Hebrew 9, 27 says, destined to die once and after that to face judgment. And that day, he is not going to come as a small baby. He is not going to come as a carpenter. He is going to come as a righteous judge. He is going to give the judgment. Let us thank him because he is not giving us the death. He is taking us to the eternal kingdom, eternal life for you and live forever and ever for his glory. Church, thank God for that. He is the enemy of our enemies. The Satan, the demon, devil, even Satan knows that he is a destroyer. Satan knows that he is an executioner. Satan knows that he is, to, he is definitely destroying us. That is why he asked one time, did you come to kill us? Did you come to torture me? In the Bible, Tamil Bible it says he is coming to destroy us. Deadliest destroyer. We have to be alert. We have to take heed. We have to remind this. We have to remember this. We have to remember our testimony church. We are not just going to enter the van. Welcome 2024. Just like that. We have to thank God because he is the enemy of our enemies. We have to thank God. He is the enemy of the world. 
May God bless with this verse. Yeah.